Hi, it's Andrew McFarland from StarterJuiceBar.com, your trusted resource for all things juice bar oriented. And today I want to do a video about the pros and cons of different juice business models. So we're going to go over three different kinds of business models for your juice company. The first one being a mobile truck, the second one being a wholesale business model, and the third being a more traditional retail brick and mortar storefront. So let's start looking at the truck and mobile vehicle as a business model. What are some of the pros for this style of business? Well, first, probably the major incentive for anyone to move into this kind of business would be the startup cost. They're relatively low. Um, that's a good thing because there's uh, ways for you to experiment with your business concept without having a huge risk. Um, that's probably, from my experience, the most um, important benefit, but there are more. I mean, I'd say there's one more. There, the other benefit is you can meet your clientele where they're at. Now, a lot of people romanticize this gourmet juice truck model. Um, I've seen a lot of people go in and out of business. Uh, it is a lot harder than it seems, and I'll start to share with you some of the, the cons or downsides of this kind of business model. Um, one of the major downsides is it, there's a limitation to the volume of business you can do because naturally you're in a 22 foot space and you have limited water, you have limited refrigeration. Um, so you're going to, even on your best day, you're going to run out of everything that's on your truck. And if you can sell more than a thousand dollars worth of stuff, you're probably doing pretty well in terms of just spatial efficiency, but that's pretty rare and challenging. So, um, I definitely had that experience for me. I I've ex have firsthand experience having a juice truck for more than a year and a half, and it was quite successful. But even with the success, I'm not sure that I'd say it was completely worth it because we didn't really make that much money relative to the store. And even just on outside of the money, our ability to serve the people was limited just because of how inconsistent a lot of the mechanics of the truck were. So that's another downside that I want to bring up. A lot of these trucks are very old and they have electrical issues. They have plumbing issues. Um, they're very small. The doors and the refrigerators will break down. So just in general, a lot of wear and tear, inconsistency. And so it's, it's kind of challenging when you have staff and you have people who have planned to be there for a day and your generator breaks down and you can't serve and it makes your customers more irritable because they love consistency and you can't be consistent. Um, so looking at another con or downside, um, which has to do with consistency is the fact that you can't really do cleanses because if you don't know that you're going to be able to make it to your location, and you have someone who signed up for a seven day cleanse, you can't be 100% confident that you can fulfill that unless you know for sure you're going to get a parking spot and you know for sure that your vehicle is in tip-top shape and it's not going to break down. Then you can do it, but otherwise it can be kind of challenging. Um, another one of the cons or downsides is that the average ticket cost is uh, or ticket sale is low. Um, what that means is the average amount that someone is going to spend when they come to place an order is a lot lower than, let's say, in comparison to a retail storefront. Um, from my experience, we had something like an $8 average ticket sale, whereas in comparison to the retail storefront, every customer spent on average around $15. So that's almost double. We can serve the same amount of people, but we're making almost twice the amount. So um, that's just a little feedback, and that's my personal experience. I don't know for sure that that would be the same for you, but this was what my experience was. Um, and then another one of the downsides I'd say, especially if you're in a major city, Chicago, LA, New York, Miami, uh, just driving these vehicles around can be really challenging because the roads are not, they're really built for compact vehicles, SUVs. They're not very restaurant on wheels friendly. 
And so when you have these huge vehicles, I remember I had an experience one time where my former business partner sideswiped a BMW and there was $30,000 worth of damage. So thankfully we had insurance and we didn't have to pay all that money, but still it was kind of inconvenient to, to have that happen. So that's, that's another one of the downsides. Um, let's move on. Let's look at the wholesale business model. What are some of the, the benefits or pros to having a wholesale business? Um, first, first pro is your startup costs are also going to be pretty low because you're not building out a restaurant. You don't have to make it look that nice. A lot of times these kitchens already come equipped with maybe even sinks and floor sinks and you name it. So to get into that kind of operation is also very inexpensive and um, therefore lower risk. Another one of the benefits is you can also serve your drinks most places. You can go to farmer's markets, you can end up in yoga studios, you can end up all over the place. Uh, and so it just creates versatility in terms of the sales that you can do and just the sheer volume of sales because unlike a truck where the kitchen is very small and unlike a retail store where your kitchen will probably be mid-size, with a commercial kitchen, you have the opportunity, a lot of times depending on the space that you find, but normally they're, they are, tend to be a lot bigger. So you, because they're built for volume, you can just do a lot more in that space. Um, another one of the benefits is that you usually have lower rent. Because it's not a retail space, you might pay a dollar to a dollar fifty per square foot, whereas if you're finding yourself in a higher end retail place, it could be two fifty, three fifty, all the way up. Um, I've seen very high rent, even for myself. We've paid astronomical rent, but it's made us the money back. So as I've said in previous videos, things are only ch as cheap or as expensive as the money it's going to make you. So don't just look, as I'm mentioning all this to you, don't just be in the mind frame of what's the most inexpensive route that you can take. Think about what the most cost-effective route that you can take is because business is all about return on investment, or ROI as they say. So think about that. So let's look at some of the downsides. Um, one of the major downsides from my perspective, probably the biggest downside is that if you're wholesaling, you are not there to sell your product. So let's say for example, you're in a yoga studio. The people who run the yoga business, their primary focus is to sell yoga memberships. Their primary focus is not to sell your juice. So that means that it can sit on the shelf. You don't know if they're in proper communication with you on the rotation of the juice. So you have to really stay on top of them and know how to check and when to check your inventory because the last thing you want is for them to not have rotated the juices and something spoils and the customers taste it and that looks bad on you. And it looks not so great for the yoga studio. So um, the fact that it's harder to sell, it's harder to educate when you're at a distance and just being aware, like I said, that the retailer is not as concerned with selling your product as they are with selling their product. Um, same thing also if you end up in a grocery store, you very likely would be one product amongst many. Maybe not, but even then, uh, you still have that same issue as far as being able to educate, inform, and sell your product. Um, Another thing is, is because you're in the wholesale business and you're talking about a fresh product, what happens most of the time for most of the companies who are doing it, they're having to degrade the quality of their juice. They're having to pasteurize it or pascalize their juice. So they, from my perspective and experience, have a lower quality product. And so you are going to be in a place where you're either competing against people who have a 30-day shelf life or you're going to have to take the same steps that they took to potentially degrade the product and not have the greatest product that you can have. And so from my perspective, that's also a big downside because uh, I feel that this is really about supporting people's health and making sure that you have the highest quality product possible. Um, so that's really it in the range of wholesale. Now let's move on to the retail side of things. What are some of the benefits or pros of having a retail storefront? So the, the first one that I'll mention is higher ticket price. So unlike the truck, when people walk into a retail storefront, if the place looks nice, there is just a higher perception of value. So people usually are willing to spend more money. And you can also, unlike a truck in a retail, you can strategically place things 
to make more sales. Like let's say, for example, you have some retail item that you want to sell and you put it right next to the register so that you can have these impulse purchases where it's on a truck. You don't have that much creative leeway in terms of design of space. So um, that's another thing. And different than a truck, when people make purchases on a truck, they're usually pretty spontaneous because they weren't expecting to make them. Whereas when you have a storefront, because you're a brick and mortar, you are consistently there. They plan their day around making certain purchases. So anytime anything is premeditated, usually people can plan to spend more in that regard. Um, another element is that when you have a brick and mortar store, because you're there's a lot of people there, you and you're in a physical location, depending on how you have it designed, you can build community. What I know about this industry that's really important to mention is that we are social creatures by nature. So I would say 40% of the reason that people make food purchases, especially in this kind of business when it comes to health, is for the product. The other 60% is for the people. People like to purchase things from people that they like, that they trust, that they want to be around. Sometimes it's just an opportunity in someone's day to relax and say hi to a friend and they just so happen to go in there and purchase the juice. So when you have a retail storefront, you have the ability to build this kind of community and that has huge value. Um, so let's look at some of the not so great sides of having a retail storefront, some of the cons you are going to have a pretty high startup cost. It's going to cost you more than the other two previous scenarios. Um, you have to design the space. You have to maybe do a little bit more, like we said, design uh, and make the place look nice and that isn't cheap. So it's a little bit more risky in that regard and it's going to take a lot more startup capital. Another thing which kind of works for you and against you, for you if you find the right location and against you if you're not in the right location is you're stuck where you're at. Uh, you sign a lease for however long, a year, five years, 10 years, and you're there or you are responsible for that lease for as long as you're there. So whether that means that if the things aren't going well, you have to find someone to sublease from you or you have to do more outreach and start doing more deliveries, different events, marketing efforts. But even from the thing about a retail location is that even from a relatively small space, you can still do wholesale um, uh, opportunities. You can sell to yoga studios and grocery stores and all of those things, farmers markets, from a retail space. But from a, a wholesale space, you can't do all the things that you can do from a retail space. So um, I would say a retail space is, is more versatile in that way. Um, so that's it on this topic. Just wanted to leave you with those things. I, I would have my personal preference of the style of business that I like to do and have liked to do in the past, but neither is better or worse. Know that I've seen people be successful in all regards. I've seen people fail in all regards. So it's a really about you reflecting and considering what kind of business model works right for you and how you want to grow your business. Uh, and maybe you explore a little bit of both all at the same time, because I've seen that happen too, and then figure out where you want to put your energy. Uh, there's ways to do it to find out what's best for you. So as always, uh, hope you guys are well. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and also feel free to share. And if you'd like to comment below on any questions you have on this video or any uh, requests for topics for future videos, I would love to hear what you guys have to share or anything else you're curious about. And this is Andrew McFarlane with StarterJuiceBar.com signing out and I'll see you guys soon.